Hello, and welcome back to another Wilders. Last time, we're going that way. The water is still in the only entrance to the cavern. There are no signs of stalks or the reef left around the entrance. Patchy sunlight coming through the broken cavern roof is enough to allow stalks to grow here, if that is what they require. A tall, bubble coated stalk which sits among reef stalk colonies covered in white, arising bars. These tall stalks seem to watch over the smaller colonies. I'll start logging notes. Soft sunlight spills down on the long, thin stalk, stretching toward the light, a coating of large, glassy bubbles glitters on the skin. Sampling available. These gaseous bubbles are intriguing. The interior gas is at elevated pressure. If this membrane ruptured, the psych would screech as if depressurized. Is this part of the stock communication system we've seen across the reef? Wait, I have an idea. Try deploying one by the, that block panel over there. I want to see how the stocks react. Just drag one over. Stocks measure crystal carbon here, hiding in a near solid wall of tubes. Mm -hmm. Vector clear. They're attracted. These bubbles must be some kind of signal system. I'll count them shrill sacks for the squid. You can use these to get through the heavy growth ahead. Let's get moving. Gavin curves away in both directions here. It's hard to see ahead. So I guess you're wondering where we are heading. There's a way station just north of here, in a finger of this reef. I want to find it. My shuttle touched down just hours ago at a floating research base to the south. That's where I found the suit. I'm here looking for a... for Dr. Mina Nomura, chasing a message all the way from Earth. I must sound mad, coming out here to a planet in the tail of Scorpius, just to follow a message. Wait, you... do you know where we are? Don't you? Are you sure? I wish I could talk properly, but this suit doesn't seem able. It looks like it's been through a lot. It looks far older than Minaya's base. Did she bring it with her? Look, let's find that way station. Then I can start piecing, piecing together what's going on. The cover narrows here and small eddies of water trail in the silt. Current can be felt drifting through the cavern entrance, bringing with it warm clouds of silt. Stock of this kind seem to produce different bubbles depending on the nearby stalks. They are the protectors of their colonies. This thin stalk sits among a bed of other growths, excluding bright bubbles for its pores. Uh. And you can sample it. Mm. 
need so much oxygen. I think I have, I have some. Yes, I think we have enough both fuel and oxygen now. I can't help but feel some unseen process is shaping the growth patterns of the reef. What invisible borders am I crossing? The scattered boulders and steep rifts of the southern reef suggest a violent geological past. Unlike the other specimens, this large stock sits alone, away from the lower beds. It is hard to tell if this is the beginning of a colony or its end. The stalks are more sparse between these rocks outcrops. This might be the easiest part of if I can clear the way. The stalks are so thick here, a sea of amber, waving fingers that must be cleared before we can pass through. But I sure as heck. The form of this basin means the water is brought to the spores released by the larger stalks. glide among the reef stalks with great care and precision, they appear to be grazing on them. These dense growths is like finding your way in a labyrinth, moving from clearing to clearing with little sense of what's ahead. Bubbles like huge pearls glint among the slopes. How do the tall slopes produce these strange screeching sounds? Some creatures target the, the stall stalks directly, perhaps because they keep them away from the other, softer stalks nearby. The growth patterns of the stalks suggest a complex territory network. Are we underestimating the complexity of these life forms? More bubble producing stalks. Are they centuries designed for early warnings or last the defenses of the colony's core? The delicate set of feeding appendages beneath the creature's shell seem to scrape the outer membrane of the stalks away. Tall bubble producing stalks that protect and monitor stalk colonies, a key part of the stalk network that scratches across the reef. I'm going to call these signal stalks for the signaling role they play in the stalk colony. East and west are stalks as far as I can see. They fade off into the silk like towers of a miniature city. So, 
Cultural sex. I don't think we need to ask much. Spores from this talk seem to be massing here in the large clamps. This might be a good place to sample them. Occasionally, when the creature scrapes the slugs too aggressively, they retract, let out a defensive signal to nearby colonies. This seems to be some tolerance for the creature scraping by the slugs. They only warn the creature when it cuts too deeply. I've noticed smaller spotted variant of these creatures. Another species? Or perhaps sexual dimorphism? These might be males. A gel jet propelled creatures with colorful mantles found hidden among the wave stalks corners, feeding on their spores. I'm going to call these coral cutters as they are so eager to gather the stalks' spores. A large creature with a translucent shell and joint legs is swimming and feeding. Raises on the membranes of the wave stalks. I'm naming these stalk scrapers for obvious reasons. You can check my nose back at the base. Those two boulders are covered with tiny stalks, a coating of amber fur waving in the currents. The last line of thick stalks before the sandy plains of the coral leaf. That's it, we are through. This place is overwhelming, so many new species. This is the sh central reef, I saw on Minaya's map that the shell flattens out here. The water beneath this outcrop feels cool or, s or shiny. Soft current scrapes sound from the rock face. A set of smooth stones sitting together in a pile. Could a creature have gathered this here? Is this a nest? This isn't a forest, but it carries the atmosphere of one, being immersed in interlocking natural processes of life and death. Ripples of silt bounce sunlight back up through the water, giving a golden glow. The center of the reef is flat and sandy, with few rocks to attach to, the stalks struggle to see these waters. There it is! I see the way station ahead! Way station set up by Minaya Nomura. It's seen better days, but it still functions beneath the coating of stalks. This place is looking a little worse for wear. Let me see if I can find an access port. Minaya never did take care of uh, her equipment. Some things never change. Sorry, give me a second. I'm just trying to. Got it! Okay, we should be able to access any data stored here. Just open the terminal and take a look. 
Using the Termina and Amura, fast access, is the player for Gnome Rock. Sync complete, data release to pilot's console. Looks have been cleared, I expected that, given the secrecy Mina seems to be operating under. But the map data mentions something Mina calls the Bloom, out across the northern rift. She's been going back and forth to something there, studying it. A unique species, perhaps? Mina, what were you doing here? Why were you keeping this discreet from the world? From me? I'm taking to my I'm talking to myself again or to whatever you are. Sorry, I don't mean let's head back to the research base. I need to think. This is with this way station operational we can call in the base retrieval drone from the utility panel. This drone will be able to pick us up from any area we've got map data for. Let's head to the base. I've got a lot to figure out. Mission complete. Drone ready. Hey, are you back online? Yes. With a sharp work for biologists, if I do say so myself. Bring up that strange casing of yours to the base took some time. And the OS here does not play nicely with whatever you are. But you should have access to select subsystems of the stack now. Mina looks to have repurposed them, some of them, so not everything is functional. Comes are shot, the generator is only partially working and one of the retrieval drones is missing. But I put it up the dive base, mapping systems and sample storage. The lab is also online with analysis tools and an integrated taxonomy for logging creatures. Take a look, I've already logged the creatures we discovered on our last dive. For any logged creatures, I'll also put sample requests in their taxonomy entries. To fulfill these requests, just find and transfer the samples to the lab, then analyze them. I can then use that data to add to the creature study. We need to register these spe species. Head down to the lab level and take a look. I'll also mark sample requests on the dive map. That way we can grab key samples for our studies while we are out in the ocean. And we are going back out soon. While we were offline, I put a signal, a suit transporter. You can see its location on the dive map. I want to find it. A suit transporter means a suit, and a suit means Mina. I'll need your help. That suit takes both of us to pilot it, and it's the only one I've got. Once you are done exploring the base, load into the dive map. We can head out from there. Catchers are small, soft bodied creatures which move quickly through the water by using siphon jets. Their mantlas strike with bright colors that shift as they swim, allowing the creatures to modify their movement through the water with precise black motion. Watching them navigate the water is hypnotic. Their rapid turns and loops show incredible agility, fitting through the water like a bathing bird. Spore catchers use this wide range of movement to pursue the various fungal spores. That are produced by the reef stalks. The spore catcher seems to be highly selective about which spores they wish to consume, suggesting that analysis of the stalk spores might tell us more about the spore catcher's behavior and diet. Stalk scrapers are large translucent shelled creatures with a distinctive swimming motion, which feed primarily on stalked colonies. 
Surprisingly, not nimble, despite his size, Stoke scrapes use some of their modified limbs to swim through the water, and others to scrape away the hitonous membrane of the stalks. This is tolerated by the stalks to some degree, although they will also deploy shrill sacks to scare the scrapers away. Stalk scrapers seem to be one of, of the more social, socially active of the reef creatures, and will call to each other when breathing or when frightened. Each specimen is, has a unique cloud button on its shell. I wonder how these are formed and what their significance is within communities. Reef stalks are fungal life forms which take the form of a series of stalks and plates anchored to rocky substrates. Their hidden exterior ranges in color from dark amber to acid yellow, leading them to resemble oversized leaf hands. This outer membrane is marked with slits which expand and contract, producing a distinctive hum. These slits or pores also allow both the release of spores by each colony and the absorption of other colonies with spores. I'm using this term for ease, but are these really seeds or something else? Both the hum and the spore exchange seem to be part of a complex communication network between individual stalk patches or colonies. However, like earth fungi, the visible part of the stalks may only be a small part of their overall mass. What networks might connect these colonies bring to them? Seeing stalks are towering fungal stalks that through swaying produce a distinctive hue or groan. Part of the stalk ecology found on the central reef. The precise role of seeing stalks is particularly obscure. Their singing seems to connect with the sonic communication between stalks as seen from the stalks' use of shrill sacks as an alarm mechanism, but what they are communicating remains unclear. Notably, seeing stalks are often coated in sporing fungal growths, which release spores as the stalks sway through the water. This is the spores released high up in the water column for a large area of the reef. There is something tree-like in the structure of the sting salts, so much so they, that they give the impression of underwater fungal forest, strange and yet familiar. Signal stalks are tall, thin, bubble-coated stalks which are often found beside other stalk colonies, like other caudalses. Signal stalks have a hidden exterior, but unlike other spe species, they feature prominent iris-seen pores that allow them to produce the large bubbles I have named shrill sacs. Through these, signal stalks act as the protectors of the stalk colonies. They are shrill sacs breaching the predators when predators approach, resulting in a warning screech that causes nearby stalks to retract. This makes them a target for creatures which graze on the stalks and only some colonies are able to maintain a single stock protector. But how do they, these stock produce their bubbles? And what dictates their growth patterns? Further analysis of their physical products and structure should help. But we will analyze them tomorrow. For now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye!